everyone! Today's palette review is going to be on the MAC Artist Library Flamboyant palette. This review will include my thoughts on the shadows as well as five eye looks and swatches. Digging right into the packaging, the MAC Flamboyant palette comes in plastic packaging with a snap closure here. When you open it up there is a massive mirror. I love that so much. It takes up the entire surface space of the palette, which is so nice to have, and it will stay upright if you want to leave it on a ledge in order to do your makeup. It is quite solid and it is quite slim, which I'm very appreciative of. I really don't like bulky packaging. I find that's too cumbersome to use, so when it's really contained like this, I really appreciate it. So while you have your shadows on the inside of the palette, obviously, the shade names are unfortunately only on the back of the palette. I found that to be rather annoying, actually, because even though I film YouTube and I want to know the shade names in order to be able to talk about them, even before I filmed YouTube, I liked knowing the shade names, and since they're only on the back, I found myself constantly flipping it over. I would have liked to have seen them printed on the inside. So this palette retails for 57 Canadian or 48 US. You are getting 12 shadows at 1.4 grams each, which is really good. I used to think the standard eyeshadow size was 1.5 grams, and I was basing that off of max single eyeshadows, so this is pr pretty close to their standard size. You are getting 12 shadows in here, seven of which are matte finish, which makes me very happy, and the others are all frost finish. Now that we've talked about the packaging, I'm going to slide in some swatches of the shadows so you can see exactly how these look like swatched out on my arm. Now that you've seen the swatches, let's talk about the shadows in depth. I first want to say just how excited I was that MAC had put out a red themed eyeshadow palette. I have talked about the fact that I've been super into red eyeshadow for a very long time, and to see MAC finally put out an eyeshadow palette made me very excited. I know red eyeshadow palettes are far more common now, especially with uh, Modern Renaissance getting launched uh, quite a few years ago now. Brands are definitely putting out more red themed eyeshadow palettes, but I hadn't really seen one from MAC. So when this one popped up, I was really excited to get my hands on it. What I especially love about this palette is that they've taken this red row at the bottom, but they've included other shades that work really well with those reds. I really like the fact that this row here is all matte and they're all varying tones of an orange or brown shade. One thing that this palette does lack though is that there is no brow bone highlight shade for me. Unfortunately, this shade here, Samoa Silk, it's a little bit too orange based for me and I think the ring light is kind of washing it out a little bit but for me it doesn't really work as a brow bone highlight shade but that's fine because I think it would work on somebody who's a little bit deeper in skin tone. So this shade over here that is amber lights and that has to be one of the most talked about shadows on YouTube in the beauty community since the dawn of this platform. That shadow is just so smooth, so pigmented and so buttery and honestly I'm surprised it's a frost because I thought it was a Velux pearl finish because that tends to be the softest, most pigmented formula as far as I'm concerned by MAC. But this one's a frost and it performs beautifully. Now since I just mentioned a brow bone highlight shade, you're probably looking at this color thinking, oh that would probably work on her. Unfortunately, no. This is more of a white gold uh, flashing frost color. It is very chunky and flaky and very reflective, but that will not work on my brow bone. I do find that this one performs a lot better if you wet your brush and then apply it. You can use it dry, but do expect that you're going to get a little bit more flakiness on your eye as you're applying it, just because it's just so, it's just flaky in texture. One of the shadows that I was super excited to try was Rule because that was another shadow that had been talked about on YouTube for a very long time and for whatever reason I just never picked it up. But it's funny, my impression of Rule was that it was a very vivid, bright orange shade verging on neon. In practice, this color is basically a transition color for me. It behaves very similarly to the Too Faced peanut butter shade that has been a long-standing favorite. Uh, I can throw it through my crease and it really helps add a little bit of transition that's a warm shade into that area. One shade that really surprised me was Fan the Flames down here. I didn't initially want to use it because it looked so pink and I'm just not drawn to pink colors. But this one, I mean, it's kind of pink, but it's got more of like a frosty orange red sheen to it. It is really pigmented and buttery. It's very similar in texture to Amber Lights. I found using that on the lid was so pleasurable because it just glides right on. 
Now, getting down to the red shadows at the bottom, this one down here, what do you call it? This one is the flamboyant shade. This one is very similar to what the pointillism up here in the sense that it's just better off being used wet. I found it was easier if I sprayed my brush with um, some water and then went straight into the pan and applied it to my eyes. I got more of a foiled texture and it was just applying a lot smoother that way. The other two matte shadows down here called Louvre at First Sight and Everyone's Darling. I love these two shades down here because they're exactly what I want in like a deep red matte formula. I use these often to either blow out my eye look like I have today or deepen up the outer corner and this kind of red color, the two of them, just make me really happy. There are two colors in here that I felt were kind of strange because the palette overall is very warm toned, but these ones over here are so cool toned. What are you called? Uh, the top one is called La Vida Mocha and then Embark is this one down here. Now initially I was not really happy to see them just because in such a warm palette I really don't want any cool toned shades but I can see how some people would find that helpful because it'll create a little bit more diversity in their eye looks. This one was lovely to use. I put it on the eyelid um, completely and it was nice, but it's not a look I necessarily go towards all the time. Embark down here, when I first used it, I was like, this is stupid. It does not go with this palette. I don't like it at all. And then I used it in today's look and I thought it worked out really well. So it really does depend on how you're using the shadows. I mean, that goes for any palette really. But my initial impression was that I didn't sort of love them that much. But later on, as I use them more, I found that I did actually quite enjoy them. And I feel like they do actually add a lot to a look. I did use Embark today on the outer corner of my eye and it doesn't change a lot of the look, but it does add a little bit of extra deepness in that outer corner that I really enjoy. All right, so I'm done talking about the shadows. So let's take a look at the five eye looks that I created using this palette. The first look uses Dada Issues through the crease. I just buffed that out with my regular sort of crease brush. I put amber lights all over the lid and this one was so pleasurable to use. It's just so smooth and creamy. I put What's the Pointillism on the inner corner of my eye to brighten it up and you can see how reflective that color really is. And then I have Louvre at first sight on the outer corner and I drag that through the crease. For look two, I have Samoa Silk through the crease. I also put Rule through the crease just to make it a little bit more orange. I put La Vida Mocha on the lid and this is again something that I would not normally gravitate towards as a lid color. I just don't tend to put dark brown shades on my lid, but I did think that this one looked quite pretty. I also have Embark on the outer corner of the eye and I do feel like La Vida Mocha and Embark work really well together because they are both more cooler tone shades in this palette. For look number three, I have Rule through the crease and then I put Dollywood just below Rule through the crease as well. They just sort of work well together because they're like varying tones of the same color. So Dollywood just helps to deepen up Rule a little bit. I have What's the Pointillism on the lid applied wet as dry was just really not happening and making it look chunky and chalky. But as you can see, it looks relatively smooth here now that it's been used on a wet brush. I have Everyone's Darling on the outer corner and drag that slightly through my crease. For look number four, I have Samoa Silk through the crease. I then put Fan the Flames on the lid and this is when I discovered just how much I like that color. I initially did not think I was going to like it, but for the sake of the video, I had to try it out. And then on use, I discovered it's beautiful. I have Louvre at first sight on the outer corner of the eye and then everyone's darling to deepen up the very outer corner. For today's look, I wanted to do the most blown out red eye that I could possibly get with this palette because this is exactly the kind of look that I wanted to create with this palette. So I have Dada Issues through the crease. This is gonna be used as a transition color, but I'm going to eventually cover it with more red. I just wanted something that wasn't so stark against my skin tone because going in with a red right away might cause some issues. I then used Flame Buoyant on my lid and I tried to apply it dry and I just wasn't loving how it was going on. It's pigmented, but it's just not as Smooth. So I wet my brush with some water that I had in a can and applied that directly to my lid and it just went on so much more smoothly and pigmented with a wet brush. To blow everything out and drag a ton of red through my crease, I used Louvre at first sight and just packed it on really, packed it on and blended it and just kept going in with more and more color because I really wanted this to look like a super blown out red eyeshadow look. To deepen up the very outer corner, I decided to try putting Embark out there. I initially wanted to put Everyone's Darling just because it is more red and I was like, well, no, try something different. So I tried Embark and even though it's cooler toned, it did add some depth to the look that I really enjoy. For my lower lash line, I used Louvre at first sight and just buffed that all along my lower lash line, blowing it out and connecting it to the outer corner of my upper eyelid. 
And then for the inner corner of my eye, I put Fan the Flames on first because I knew I was going to be going in with What's the Pointillism, but I didn't want What's the Pointillism to be so white gold in that area. So putting Fan the Flames on first helps to kind of tone down that color. It looks very pink on application, but then when I put What's the Pointillism on top of it, it kind of melds together and creates a little bit more of a brighter pink, white, red shade. So this is the entire eye look and I have to say I am just so happy with how this turned out. I love red eyeshadow intensely and when I can do this sort of shimmery but matte blown out red eye look I am ecstatic. So I'm super happy with how this eye look came together. Alright so to finish up this review you have seen my swatches, you've heard my thoughts on all of the shadows and you've seen the five eye looks that I created with this palette. And I have to say, I'm really excited by it. I know there are other red palettes on the market right now, but MAC has really had a place in my heart for a very long time. And I'm just so happy to see them put out a palette that I am so into. Because I feel like I've not really been drawn towards a lot of MAC launches recently. And when I saw them put out this, I was so excited. And I'm also happy that there's actually permanent shades in here. This is not just all new shades or cobbled together from collections, although there are some shadows that are completely new to me, but like Samoa Silk, Rule, Embark, those are all shadows that people have been talking about for a very long time, and for whatever reason I just didn't have those colors, so I'm really happy to have it in this format because I feel like it just really works well together. Even the colors I'm not necessarily drawn towards, like this one up here, I mean I could do without that one, it's just a taupe brown shade that I don't really care about. But Embark, my first impression of it was that it did not fit with this palette, but in practice I discovered that it does actually work very well. So it is nice to have some cooler toned shades in here to sort of balance out all the warmth. I do feel like the shadow quality kind of varies a little bit in this palette, but that's mostly just in how I'm dipping my brush into them. The mattes, some of them are harder packed, but in application they're totally fine, so I didn't feel like that was a problem. The frost finishes though, man, what a varying degree of sort of actual texture of them. Uh, amber lights and uh, what do you call down here? Fan the flames. Apply smoothly, buttery, no problem. But there are other ones in here that I feel like you did need to apply them wet. Like what's the pointillism up here and then flamboyant were definitely better applied with a damp brush. Honestly that doesn't really bother me. I just go in with a damp brush if I have to and if it ups the pigmentation I'm perfectly happy with that. The one thing that kind of annoys me about this palette though has to be the fact that the shade names are only printed on the back and it's a sticker at that. It seems really bizarre that they just don't have the shade names on the inside because I mean MAC is not an especially cheap brand but it seems really cheap to not have the names printed on the inside and I understand they're probably using this palette and this format for multiple variations of shades but I mean I really would have liked to have had the shade names on the inside. Most brands are doing that these days and I do expect that of MAC as well. So in short, I'm really happy with this palette. I love the compactness of the palette. I like that it's sturdy, I like the mirror is huge, and I love the shadow colors in here. So for me, the MAC Art Library Flamboyant Palette is an absolute win. All right, that's gonna be it for this review. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.